Hello again, welcome back to my workshop. Now this week I'm going to show you how to turn a bit of an old garden table a couple of bits of worktop and some chain into this Ooh. Stay tuned and I'll show you how. Welcome to Frank's Little Workshop. Shall we make something? So this week's project is a gift for my nephew. Um, he's just had a little baby girl, Frankie, and I've decided uh, as a gift, um, I wanted to make a box, um, just as a baby keepsake box. Um, so basically, this is how I did it. Then a good project, you always start with a nice cup of tea. Um, then, right, I had to prepare all of my raw materials. Um, and here I'm using some offcuts from a, an oak worktop that I had as leftover from when I did the kitchen. Um, basically cutting them into slices because I needed to make a board that was about 18 mil thick. Uh, I didn't want to just buy board, uh, I wanted to use oak. Um, so <clears throat> I had to slice the oak into 18 mil thick slices and my plan is to actually stick them end to end to create a board. Uh, initially I had two little pieces of worktop uh, that wasn't quite enough because you saw me laying out the size there um, so I had to cut some extra and then now now I've got all the bits cut to size I'm checking it for approximate size how big I want the box. So now I have to get out my uh, planar thicknesser um, do some quick setup checks uh, get the extraction set and the idea is to plane and thickness all of the pieces of wood so they're all exactly the same size. Uh, here I've just numbered all of the pieces of wood separately um, so I know which ones are the front, which ones are the backs, which ones are the sides. Uh, then I can start the laborious task of running them all through the planer uh, just to make sure they've got at least two flat sides that are right angles to each other. Uh, then the idea is then I then convert my planar thicknesser into thickness in mode, uh, clean out all the sawdust obviously, uh, and then using the, the flat surfaces that I created on the planar, I then run them through the thicknesser, uh, a specific thickness, so all of the pieces are the same thickness. Um, then quick clean out, and adjust the thickness R and then do the height of each individual piece of wood uh, so they're also exactly the same. So running them through here uh, periodically checking to make sure they're all the same thickness. Uh, then blow the planar thickness out, clean it out uh, and then stash it out of the way and obviously have a quick clean up. Then I made a quick jig uh, so I could ensure that all of the pieces of wood are exactly the same length. Uh, it's just basically a stop on my, my chop saw uh, and it's up a little production line there to chop them all the same length. Okay, the glue up. Um, this is the first bit of glue up which is the it's going to be the top. Um, so examine the pieces of wood uh, just to, so I can get a best grain pattern on the top even though it's going to be a, a, an assembled board. Um, glue one edge on each piece of wood and then clamp them from the bottom and a clamp on the top to stop it from bowing. Uh, now a couple of quick calculations to figure out how big I'm going to do the joints. Now this is for the box joints. Uh, rather than making up the box and then creating um, a box joint jig, uh, I decided to cut each individual piece individually. So <clears throat> then I can use the band, the table saw to actually cut out the joints. You can see my method here basically using the sliding table um, I can 
set my end stop and then use the blade to actually route out the uh, the actual joint. Now there's normally a, there's a dado blade that you can use for this but I don't have one of those. They tend not to be very popular in this country. Um, so I'm using an individual blade and using it the thickness of the blade with each cut. Uh, the end stop I'm using now is quite important. And this is how it fits together. That's the plan. Uh, then a quick assembly trial here. Yeah, that's about the size I'm going to make it and it looks like it's going to work. So a quick tidy up and a quick hoover up to make sure there's not dust everywhere. And then I think I called it a day there. So after I finished, lights off. This is the next day. Now the front and the back and the two sides I'd bunched together because I'd numbered them all. Uh, and now I'm going to stick them all together using the same method I used for sticking the top together. So basically two long clamps, um, do a trial fit first to make sure it's okay, then gluing one edge uh, and then clamping them together and wiping off as much of the excess glue as I can because it can cause problems later on. Uh, same method here for the other side. Now you can, when you put them together, you can actually feel the adhesion of the glue. Um, obviously the better suction it has, uh, the better finish you're going to get. Um, so that's both the sides done. Now this was the back. Um, here I was running out of glue. As you can see I was scraping around for glue. So there's not quite as much glue on here. But there's enough. Um, obviously this is the front and the back are slightly longer than the sides. Uh, and it was giving me some problems with the amount of uh, movement that was in the wood. Uh, obviously over the, the length of the piece of wood there was some bowing that went on. Um, here using some pulled out my old Evo stick glue from the cupboard uh, because obviously I'd run out of my Gorilla glue. Um, same method. Okay, once they'd all dried, a uh, nice cup of tea in the front there. You've always got to have a cup of tea. Uh, this is basically taking all the clamps off, putting all the clamps away so they're not in the way and now I can start the process of cleaning off the paper. Now I've used paper, I've said this before in one of my previous videos, uh, you use paper to stop the, the wood glue actually sticking to the clamps. So this sanding was to uh, basically get all of the remaining bits of wood glue off and um, the bits of blue paper that were stuck to it. Um, but this just went on forever. Uh, you could see I was using my little bench dogs there. Um, they're excellent but obviously the more and more sand, uh, so sanding you do, you create more and more sawdust and the bench dogs eventually start moving around the table. Um, so I used one of these uh, non-slip mats from the pound shop. Uh, then that way I can ensure it all stays flat. Uh, that was a trial fit quickly to see if the uh, the joints are actually going to work. A uh, couple of little calculations here to figure out how big the top and how big the bottom are going to be. Um, I can't just go by the, the overall size of the box because the top and the bottom are going to be inserts. Uh, so once I've got my calculations uh, I can start trimming. This is the top I uh, did it in multiple passes to get as clean a cut as possible. Because um, last thing, because it is oak, it can sometimes chip, which is not very desirable. Now this is going to be the bottom. This is actually a piece of pine. Uh, it was off the top of a, a set of chest of drawers. Uh, so it's basically an old scrap of wood. Uh, but it's it's been well seasoned. It's nice and dry. Um, and now uh, I'm doing the, the recess uh, for where it's actually going to slot into the bottom of the box. So both the top and the bottom have got a stepped recess um, which you can see there um, and what I have to do is create um, on the sides and the back and the front I have to create the actual rebate that these are going to sit in. Uh, so if I want the top of the box and the bottom of the box flush with the sides um, there's obviously a step down. This I have to take into account and then basically using the table saw here, uh, multiple passes, 
um, I can basically route out the uh, the groove as you can see here the uh, the top is being slid into the groove this is a quick trial fit and then repeat the process for the bottom now add a added complication here because the piece of wood at the bottom was a slightly different thickness to the top so I couldn't just duplicate the uh, the, the values um, so remeasuring and then re-sawing all of these to create the grooves and then as soon as I've done that another trial fit with the base and the top all in place now, this is not glued or anything it's just put together to see if it's actually going to work uh, then get the table saw out of the way again and once again tidying up sweep 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 um, put away as much things as possible um, and then I can start measuring out now measured out the top this is how big the lid is going to be even though it's not glued together at the moment I needed to know how big the sides were going to be uh, this gave me the measurements so I could then go over to the CNC machine and start doing my design uh, it was just basically going to be some like little line cub type of designs on the sides um, but obviously because I did the measurement for how big the lid was going to be I knew how big the sides were going to be okay this was the base uh, and the piece of old wardrobe or chest of drawers or whatever it was um, sanding off some of the, the varnish just to see what condition the wood was in underneath and this is actually the top uh, now a bit of an oversight here on one of the pieces of worktop uh, at some point there's been a screw inserted now where I've cut it into slices um, is exposed where the screw hole was and it looked like a screw hole so here I've measured out and chiseled out a, a small section I'm just going to put in a little tiny insert made of the same wood um, and then sand it flat so hopefully you'll be able to see that okay the CNC machine uh, the design was done um, and it is the first very first trial just so I could see how it came out uh, now the first run I did the speed too fast and it ended up with some some quite rough uh, pieces uh, furry pieces of wood basically where it hasn't had time to cut it properly um, so I went through this process of sanding and cleaning out every single groove um, as a result for the the remaining carvings um, I basically slowed the speed down of the CNC machine um, and then that gave me a much finer finer cut uh, but I still cleaned it up afterwards to make sure there wasn't any furry bits um, and the results end results are going to be quite good and this is the top you can see there the, the groove around the edges of the top that's where it inserts into the sides of the box and this was the very very top yeah that came out satisfactory now this is going to be the front, uh, a small little lion design on the front there, hoovering as I go to make sure it's cutting well. Um, it's a very good CNC machine this, I'll hopefully do a review on it at some point. Um, I built this a couple of years ago. And here again, cleaning process, just to clean everything off. So as you can see, the, uh, the results are quite nice. done clamping it from the table now it's literally just um, some allen bolts that hold it down these special clamps are made um, very effective um, nothing moves around when you're actually doing it which is all good um, and they're quick so this is what the front looks like I think it's suitable yep yeah, that's quite good we like that so that's what we use now a trial fit here to make sure everything slots in place and can actually see what it's going to look like yep and then take it apart again so next step here is the big glue up of the box now this is going to be tricky because you've not only got the box joints but you've also got the insert for the top and the bottom all to go in all at the same time um, obviously once the glue has set there is no going back um, so had to be careful and take some time over this to make sure that all the pieces locked in place and there's no little gaps um, so of course I used every single clamp I've got uh, big clamps, small clamps, long clamps uh, just to try and get this together 
lots of fettling went on when this was happening um, to make sure that everything was located properly. Um, checking to make sure underneath that it's all located. Uh, another clamp there, and then yeah, maybe I'll stick another clamp on the back. Yes, of course I will. Um, and then once I was finally satisfied that all of the gaps are closed as much as possible, uh, some additional clamps on top to stop things sliding about. I'm happy with that. So we leave that to dry. Okay, didn't show the uh, the bit where I unclamped it, but the process was the same. Um, here's the box now; it's all stuck together. But as you can see, it hasn't got a lid. It's all just one solid thing. Um, some sanding down to get off any any glue that remained and um, to make sure there's nothing glaringly obvious about the joints make sure the joints are all sitting properly um, now there you could see these gaps were created when I was making the rebates for the top and the bottom so basically I've taken some piece of, of the oak cut them to the right size a little bit of glue insert them in the hole chop them off and then sand them uh, then hopefully they won't be glaringly obvious once the whole box is sanded so that's done and now it's time to cut the lid off now this bit's always a bit tricky because um, if you cut it wrong obviously it's going to be a complete disaster now you can't cut it all the way through in one go uh, because sometimes when you get to the final cut the top the lid will come apart um, and it will tip and the blade will catch the bottom and then you end up with gaps so you have to do this in multiple stages and then cut it open I use here my Japanese saw um, and I'm quite happy with that okay clear out the tape saw and sweep up so this part here now I'm covering this in shellac which is basically um, a sanding sealant um, and the reason for this is when you're doing the painting afterwards you need this barrier the additional barrier otherwise the paint will soak into the wood uh, so basically I'm just shellacking the parts that have been engraved um, so it'll help with the painting now this is where the garden table comes into play um, some pieces of garden table I think it's a hardwood uh, it's a slightly darker color than the other wood so cutting this into little strips that are only about three mil four mil thick uh, and I can use these um, it's basically a piece of trim between the box and the lid uh, so cut in each angle 45 degrees and doing this for the box and the lid and then once I've actually cut them all and I'm happy with them like that then I can basically clamp them into place so I'll clamp them all this is a dry clamp so clamp them to make sure they all fits and then remove them one at a time and glue it that way you're not fighting with four separate pieces of wood uh, with glue all at the same time because that's that's just an impossibility so removing one at a time gluing them up putting them back in place clamping them then moving on to the next one and once i was happy with the lid then i went on to the box and repeated the same process obviously with bigger clamps uh, again you can never have enough clamps there just isn't enough clamps um, so clearing off as much of the glue as possible uh, to save with sanding and planing later um, once I was happy that all of these pieces were in place and there wasn't any too big overhangs or anything then I just left it all to dry and there you go leave that to dry and once it was dried uh, removed all the clamps put them all away because they're all in a bleeding way now uh, and then I can move on to the next stage and the next stage is obviously cleaning up the overhang now obviously the bits of trim were slightly larger than the box so um, using a plane and sanding trimmed off all the excess now this is quite quite a bit of self-indulgence here I do enjoy using a plane um, it gives you some really nice results um, and it's sometimes it's better than sanding to remove large amounts of, of material so once I was happy that they had been planed to flush with the box um, then I moved on to the lid I repeated the process with the plane on the lid okay this is as you can see I'm just concentrating on the outside of the uh, the box at the moment the inside of the box uh, was treated slightly differently 
as you can see here what I've done is I needed because I'm going to be lining the box with some foam uh, some hobby foam um, I needed to make some little battens here which are the same thickness as the foam and then route the overhang on the inside to the same thickness as the foam so that way there's no um, there's no overhang of the foam and there's nothing for you to catch um, to use those those battens I used uh, were actually part of an old Venetian blind uh, now that was my wife just come in to tell me that my dinner's ready so uh, that was all very nice and then I carried on now the painting uh, it's just standard gloss paint in a spray can I spray some of it in the lid uh, this works quite effectively uh, and basically I'm painting into all of the, the grooves I'm flooding all the grooves with the paint now this is where the shellac was important because the intention is when I sand this afterwards I can sand off all of the the face of the board uh, but all of the paint that's sitting inside the grooves won't be sanded away um, so repeat this process just basically flooding all of the, the engraving with the paint until I was happy that every little bit would, had been filled again this is quite satisfying when you're doing this uh, obviously getting as much off as possible um, this is the top now same process same paint um, obviously try not to get any paint on any bits of the wood that have not been treated with the sanding sealer otherwise it will soak into the wood and it will be there forever um, so trying to be as, as neat as possible you can see I'm dabbing it to absorb any excess bits of paint that are not going to be needed afterwards okay and then once this was done and I'm happy with that everything's flooded that's good little touch up on the side there then I can concentrate on putting the foam in now this foam uh, I bought from the range you can buy it from places like Hobbycraft and it's just basically hobby foam uh, I found this quite quite good for lining the inside of boxes um, and here just basically cutting it to the correct size so I can actually insert it into the inside of the lid and here you can see how important it was for that lip to be the right size on the lid more cutting here now I just saw me removing the label there that caused me a bit of a problem later because they actually put those labels on with a staple and that leaves a tiny little hole in the foam and when I got to the glue up stage the glue was squeezed through the hole and immediately it picked up dust and dirt and of course then you've got dust and dirt on the wrong side of the foam but overall this this foam is quite good uh, I think it's quite quite durable um, and its effect is quite good and it gives it a nice soft feel inside um, final bits of trim there on the inside of the lid now back to the engraving and I've covered it in a quick spray of clear uh, lacquer uh, this should give the bits of paint that are actually in the grooves um, a gloss um, and now I'm assembling the lid and the box together so I can actually do a, a rebate all around the the edge um, here just checking up the, the size of the trimming I want to do my route a bit here now I had a problem here the uh, the vibration of the route a bit combined with the sawdust actually made the the route a bit move um, so I've ended up having to put a bit of tape around my my palms and router to uh, to stop it from falling apart but as you can see I've now got the uh, the angle on all the corners um, this gives it a, a slightly different finish rather than just having harsh corners um, obviously once this is all sanded it's going to give it an interesting interesting appearance same treatment for the uh, the top here uh, I can do the very top with no problem but then to do the the edges I had to put the the lid into a vise okay quick you can see the angles there it gives it a slightly different look okay more sanding so back onto the sanding this is now sanding away the lacquer and the sanding sealant just to re reveal the uh, the characters 
uh, the painted characters and you, this is your ideal opportunity for checking to make sure that all of your edges are clean and crisp uh, last thing you want is bits of paint bleeding through onto the wood uh, so a quick vacuum there and it exposes the final look uh, which is which is good it's uh, it's quite satisfying that part because you actually suddenly the pictures st stick out so then I decided because there was quite a lot of sawdust uh, around from the the sanding and the planing etc etc uh, decided to have a bit of a massive tidy up here um, so I could clear the worktop um, and then I can concentrate on fixing the hinges and the handles um, but what I want to do now is try and keep the sawdust in the workshop down to a minimum uh, so using obviously sweeping up and hoovering as much as possible um, and then the next day I was ready to do some hinges so I'm using these uh, they're like uh, Butterfly hinges, uh, they're sort of an antique style. Um, they're, I think they're cast aluminium, but they're, they're supposed to be cast iron. They may even be iron, I don't know. Um, but they're very, very rustic. Um, so you have to be very careful uh, about lining up the holes because the holes are not equal. You couldn't use the holes as a guide on one of the hinges and then fit the other hinge because the, the, they're not exactly the same. Uh, screws I used there were very very slightly too long so they end up going all the way through the wood but I'll have to deal with that afterwards so here <clears throat> measuring up and fitting the handles on both, both sides um, which is a, a relatively simple job um, now obviously the, the latch initially I wasn't going to have a latch on it but I found this latch and I thought um, yeah it would be a good thing to do it would stop it falling open whenever you're moving the box uh, again this is a, a sort of cast iron looking latch very basic um, and that worked okay so now those screws that I was talking about quickly use my angle grinder to touch off the top of the screws um, and then give them a bit of a sand down then take all the hinges off again so all the hinges come off all the handles come back off um, so now I'm ready to do some more sanding so this is a, a slightly higher grade of paper now so this is going to be the, the final grading of sanding um, using a combination of my random ball book sander um, and a sanding block uh, one of those foam sanding blocks and a little bit of uh, planing on the, the faces that meet together uh, more sanding and sand, 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 sand. I actually cut a lot of this out. There was there was hours and hours of this sanding, um, and I managed to minimise it down to just a few minutes. Um, turn the extractor on because I'm now going to use some wood dye. Uh, this can be a bit smelly. Um, basically, this is just a, a oak effect. Even though it is oak, it's a slightly darker oak effect. Wood dye. Um, a quick coating with this making sure it's even and there's no runs um, and you can actually see it's the first time the actual color of the wood you know really pops out um, and I'm yeah I quite like the, the look of that so once that's dried uh, I can then start sticking in the interior this is obviously the, the foam I was talking about earlier um, spraying it with it's actually carpet adhesive now each individual piece um, you'll notice I'm using a separate piece of blue paper uh, because obviously once you've sprayed it if you laid the next piece on top of that you're going to get bits of sticky glue on the wrong side of the foam uh, which you want to avoid at all costs so every time you spray make sure you change the bit of paper afterwards uh, okay just pushing it all into place with a paintbrush there uh, it's obviously a dry paintbrush, nothing on it, just to use it as a something to flatten things out, make sure there's no bubbles underneath it. Uh, sort of similar principles to wallpapering, um, because you can get bubbles behind this, which are impossible to get rid of. Um, final trimming to make sure there isn't any overhang, um, and that these there's no catchy bits on the foam, because if there's a catchy bit, it will get caught and then the last thing you want is the foam actually coming away from the inside of the box uh, again using a paintbrush here to push it all into place uh, making sure the lip is even yeah that's all satisfactory good 
So now we can refit the hinges. Okay, and then the lid goes on, hinges onto the lid. Obviously these holes all pre-drilled and a runner screw into them uh, previously so this final assembly was quite simple um, because you couldn't get it wrong. Uh, now to stop the lid flapping right open which would obviously rip the hinges off uh, I've put in a couple of little bits of chain. This is where the bit of chain comes in. Uh, all I've done is measured halfway along the box uh, and halfway along the lid um, and about 10 mil down I put a, a drill hole in each, put a screw in, bit of chain, job done. So now for the final finish, uh, this is a natural wax. Um, I coat the whole of the box in the natural wax, um, making sure you cover all of it. Uh, this is obviously going to be the final finish um, and this will protect the wood. Uh, it still allows it to breathe, um, which is which is quite good. Um, but it will also, there, buffing it off, it will also give it a nice sheen. Uh, just using a, a towel here, a soft towel to, to buff it off. Buff, 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 and then just check in with a torch to make sure it's okay. And this is the final product, as usual. Um, turned out very nice. Um, it's a very rustic. You can see here, you can see the actual final result of all the, the box joints um, and the design. Uh, it's a very personal gift. Um, hopefully it'll be one of these things that kicks around for years and years. Yeah, the inside looks uh, looks quite nice. It could have been slightly better. Um, and there's obviously you can see some of the joins, uh, but that's to be avoided if you can. So yes, we like that. That's good. So, a couple of little shots here of the final product. Well, thank you for staying till the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed all of that. Um, it was quite a long task. Um, I didn't realise it was going to take so long. Uh, I think all in all it's taken me about 60 hours to make this thing. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, they they like it. It should last for quite a few years. Um, so there you go. It should make a nice present. Uh, next video, we'll um, do some other woodworking things, hopefully. Um, if there's anything you would like to see me make or do or review or anything like that, just let me know in the comments below um, and I'll try and make a video about it. Uh, so thank you very much again for watching the video um, and I shall deliver this and hopefully they'll like it. Bye. Hopefully we'll make some other interesting thing and uh, 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 some of my methods of doing this talky talky talk. Uh, if you'd like me to go into Yeah. Let's see. Oh, I don't know.